Uh, he said, I don't like the term growth management because it, it, it assumes that growth creates problems that have to be managed. Uh, he's a developer himself and thinks that way. But, uh, uh, but yeah, no, that's my understanding with regard to those. Yeah. Unless, unless I'm incorrect, which I could Anybody else? I have a question. Um, after the last election, there was a brief flurry in the papers that the Democratic Party of Sarasota was going to get involved in local development issues, which I, which I saw as a great thing. Since then, I haven't heard much from them about that. Do you have any idea of what happened to the Democratic Party's uh, initial enthusiasm for that and why it's not, not, not taking place since then? Yeah. Um, well, you know, this may seem um, inappropriate as a Republican for me to critique the local Democratic Party, but I, I welcome the opportunity. Uh, I'm a Democrat, go for it. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, and the uh, gentleman sitting behind you, John Soucy, had a whole lot to do with, uh, with, with that success and getting the local Democratic Party to come out against the Siesta Promenade uh, development at, at uh, Sticky Point in 41. Um, and, and I'm sure you, you guys talked, but if you want to know more about it, he knows more than me, and I've learned some of this from him um, and, and from others. Uh, but uh, you know how I talk about things being done behind the scenes? That goes on with the leadership of the local Democratic Party. And there are instances where the party will take a pass at running candidates in local elections. Uh, and historically, the local Democratic Party has done exactly that, Wesley. I don't know if you know this history. Uh, but, uh, you know, they focused on uh, top of the ballot races for President of the United States, uh, for governor, sometimes the congressional and legislative races, but have, have not gotten involved in local election. It's sort of been in accord with the cabal um, that uh, some of the developers will give some money for those other campaigns, won't cause too much trouble for the Democrats, um, but they get a pass on the local elections. Um, I hope you get support from the party. I, I've heard that uh, you may well uh, get some support from the local Democratic Party this time, uh, but it was your idea to run, wasn't it? Um, and the, She's saying yes. You know, she wasn't recruited uh, by the top leaders of the party. They're not out there recruiting somebody for the, the Karajulo scene. In fact, uh, I heard that uh, their top person in charge of that uh, was actually discouraging people from running uh, for that seat. Um, in, in the school board, you know, it's, it's really odd. Apparently, Shirley Brown, a Democrat on the school board, is not facing opposition for re-election. And Bridget Ziegler, uh, very tied into the cabal as a Republican uh, on the school board, uh, doesn't appear to be facing opposition either. Um, although Jane Goodwin, uh, who got Pat Neal very upset on impact fees, uh, is facing uh, a challenge. Um, so you know, don't put it beyond the, the, the people that uh, seek to make it a mission to control government by controlling elections. Uh, to uh, do what they can to do that within both political parties. Uh, certainly the Republican Party here locally and uh, unfortunately to a, a large extent with the Democrats as well. I hope they come around for you uh, and do what you can. Uh, Lord is the same, but not in the general if I win. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, there needs to be reform all across the board. Um, yeah, would you use the mic? Actually, this is directed to you and to Mike. Mike said earlier that this Thursday that there is going to be a meeting at City Hall yep. with the city administrators and two other organizations, uh, uh, I guess, about the setbacks and well, uh, the various divisions of the, our government. So yeah. you know, one hand, what one hand is yeah, well, Let me tell you about what it is. is Stop uh, has had influence in, in the city. Uh, they have these meetings and they pack the Selby Auditorium. And because uh, they've managed to get to a lot of people, uh, the City Coalition, the Neighborhood Association, some of their leaders have been very helpful in, in, in helping stop get it start. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and they've, they've rolled along with great success. So they have a way of packing City Hall. And uh, so they asked the city commission up front when this form-based code started to come out of the gate and said, we would like specific meetings devoted to discussing in one meeting setbacks and sidewalks 
in another meeting um, the, the, the focus of the discussion Thursday night at 5 o'clock at City Hall. And that is what's called administrative approval. Um, the development interests love to get their way by getting approvals for developments behind the scenes by city staff. Because in the city of Sarasota, the staff is deep in the pockets of the developers. Why? I'm not sure. Maybe it's just because they deal with them day by day or whatever. But they, they are. So the idea is, to a large extent, that's the way it's done now um, in the city, particularly in the downtown area. The form-based code would extend that throughout the city. Um, reduce the number of public hearings that there are. Reduce the number of votes of the city commission that there are. Reduce the number of votes of the planning board that there are. And have development, key development decisions, site plans and otherwise, um, made more often by uh, pro-developer administrative staff behind the scenes without adequate public review and public input and, and determinations by elected public officials. Um, that offends a lot of us. And uh, so stop, uh, that's one of their chosen uh, agenda items. Uh, they have certain things they've decided to push on, uh, in addition to setbacks and sidewalks and, 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 and public uh, approval, not administrative approval. Um, uh, they're also big on having accurate traffic studies, because that's been another problem um, with developers. So and those are the three, right? Did I miss one? No, traffic and the city so that's going to be the, the focus of the meeting uh, Thursday night is the uh, administrative approval process. Whether whether to draw it back or move it forward, it clearly should be drawn back. I, I, oh, I'm going to pass it back. Oh, I'm sorry, just to add that. Yeah. You, were, uh, you were speaking about the Venice and it was easier uh, for them not to deal with the wetlands. Mm -hmm. Did that have to do with the conservation eas easement code, the ordinance? The um, change of wording from perpetual conservation easement to restrictive covenant? Um, yeah, who was it I was talking to? I, talking to you, I was Probably. talking to you about that earlier. Um, yeah, and that's, yeah, that's something at the county level, a uh, change in terminology, not for the good. Um, I mean, conservation easements should remain that that nomenclature because it shows us being conserved for, uh, for, uh, uh, for conservation. And easements typically are stronger than covenants. Covenants more likely can be amended, but you can have a non-amendable covenant. It depends on how it's worded. Uh, but no, that, that's a different matter. But what was it, why did they initiate? I would think it would make it less, like say if you're looking at land that, you know, someone's donated a conservation easement to get a higher density. And instead, they're using it. They're calling it restrictive code, then a restrictive covenant. Then that's easier to change between both parties. It depends on how it's worded. Yeah. 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 And, then, and that should be scrutinized there, to make sure. There was a big change in the code in 2016. Yeah. Well, it's good to try on top of that. You know more about that than I do. Oh, I don't know. I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Dan, you're breaking up. I think you're saying that the staff seems to be putting these things together in the city. Uh, are you saying that did they act on their own? There's no real supervision. Did the, the city manager or the city commissioners don't have any, any say in what they're doing? They're all operating on their own? Yeah, they have done this through different city managers. So I can't think that it's Tom Barwin came up with these policies and is pushing it through the staff. Uh, the staff, for instance, um, the staff has had this contempt for the automobile. Because if you don't care about traffic, you don't care about the intensity of development, right? They go hand in hand. So, you know, they had this whole thing that let's uh, make it so difficult to drive in the city of Sarasota that it forces people out of their cars to walk and bike wherever they want to go or, or, or get on buses to get caught in traffic, too. Um, and, and they've done this deceptively. They, they had uh, a website, let's get moving Sarasota with speed lines off, off of the, the words. Um, and underneath, you know, they didn't present it clearly, but there were policies to make it very difficult to drive, uh, you know, other than creeping along in a parking lot full of cars. Um, so, you know, they, they, even before Barwin, I don't know whether it was two city managers back maybe, the same staff or their predecessors had this idea of taking US 41 along the Bayfront, um, uh, you know, where it curves around with the condominiums, Gulfstream and all that, 
and, uh, and reducing the size, I think, to two lanes, uh, uh, one lane each way. And the people were so furious about that. <laughs> it packed City Hall. A group called uh, Mo Mobility Now was formed, and, and it was killed. But they keep doing it. Now they want to do it to Fruitville Road. Take a four-lane arterial highway, a hurricane evacuation route, and turn it from four lanes into two lanes. And they claim, well, it's not going to slow down traffic. It's going to move just as fast because we're going to put in a roundabout. Um, and, and, and I've looked at the traffic studies behind that, and it's so fraudulent. It assumes that the drivers in Sarasota, of the age that a lot of drivers are, and the transiency that characterizes a lot of the others, will uh, be more adept at going through roundabouts quickly than the national public at large. So they make a deviation from the national data uh, on, that, on that point. Uh, everything they can do to, to get their way. And, and the reason they're doing it on Fruitville is to, and they've been open about this, is to accommodate the developers north of Fruitville Road so that the people in their developments can uh, combine more easily with downtown Sarasota. And the developers up there have been clamoring for this. But um, they're, they're taking, uh, Michael Shea's uh, been studying this very carefully. They, they have a proposal to go together with that Fruitville Road Diet, they call it, and make it very difficult to drive on the two roads on either side of Fruitville. Fruitville is Third Street, basically, used to be, and second and fourth, and put up barriers, uh, stub outs, and uh, other things to block an entire section of the road to make it impossible to go straight in some places and very difficult to turn in others. Um, it, it's the ins insanity. They, they've stripped all road improvements other than roundabouts out of the city's capital improvement program. Um, even though there are places it can be done without being too disruptive to neighborhoods. Um, so, but, it, but I don't think it's, it's the city managers, although they've been part and parcel of this. They, when they've been recruited, and, and the new planning director for the city of Sarasota, same agenda. Um, they've been recruited knowing they buy into this agenda, but it, it's, it's this amorphous blob of staff that somehow seems to have a mind of its own in the city of Sarasota and pushes its agenda vigorously. They get slapped down and they come back months later after the next election. Um, they're doing that with gutting the transportation chapter of the comprehensive plan. They're doing that with the fruitful road diet. Uh, they're doing it with other things, and uh, that's the biggest problem in the city of Sarasota is the staff. The deep county. What's that? The deep county. The deep county. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, you didn't mention the Unified Development Code. I thought that... Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I mean, I'm concerned that the administrative approval allowed in the city is going to now be adopted in the county under the Unified Development Code. Um, yes, the county has taken the zoning code and the land development regulations, combining them into one thing called the Unified uh, Development Code. And, uh, uh, and and I came up with an alternative acronym for the UDC, uh, uh, something about uncontrolled development, but anyway, I don't remember what the C was. <laughs> um, and so I was fearful. Um, knowing how things are done, that that would be a mechanism to loosen up the zoning code. But I, I've been studying the drafts, and I can't say I've completely finished going through the last draft, which is <laughs> I enjoy doing this. Um, and, but um, uh, so far, so good on most things. Um, there is a section I'm worried that they might be reducing public notice, but they say they're reconsidering that. Um, but in certain, in terms of the processes and the substantive requirements, I'm being assured by staff, you know, that they're not making any substantive changes. They're just trying to merge the two into one more readable code. And from the pieces I've looked at, uh, it doesn't seem to be going particularly astray. I don't think they're courting controversy on that one, but, uh, but the book's open. You know, I haven't finished reading it yet. Yeah, because no, I heard about the administrative approval. And in in the I UDC? Mean, in the UDC. You have? That's yeah, I'd be interested if, if you know a chapter or verse on that at some point. I haven't seen any of the uh, final drafts, so I have to check to see where they might put that, but it must be under the, uh, yeah, that the staff be, that would be responsibilities. Awful. Well, see, the first part I did read real carefully, and the first part was the procedure, and okay. it definitely was not in the first part. Okay. And then the second part they just come out with, came out with, which is much, much longer, uh, dealt with the substantive requirements, the setbacks, the heights, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and I'm being assured, and from the little spot reading I've been doing, I think it's correct that they're not making substantive so, um, but it's a moving target. They're changing it every draft. So, you know, we 
be the stand on top of that. Okay. Among Thanks. many other things. Hi, uh, Mike Constantine here. I just want to thank you, Dan, for your uh, long-term diligence towards these issues. You're really an asset to our community, and uh, certainly Lourdes and Wesley for running. And, and I just want to reiterate to everybody in the room that um, it becomes eminently easier to replace these people on the commission if this single-member district goes through. I mean, it's the, the funding required and the ability to reach the people in, in your area, it's its absolutely imperative, not only that we all sign that particular petition, I'm not here, I have petitions of my own, and I'm not Certainly even concerned with those right now. Um, it, it's absolutely imperative and we can save this community through the single member district. I, I just want to reiterate to everybody how important that is, and thank you very much thank for your you. efforts. Thank you, Mike, and, and, uh, uh, and, and I echo all that. I, it's, uh, it would make a big difference. And, and let me suggest to anybody that doesn't read the, the Phoenix um, that John Susi uh, puts out, um, I think you've, you've got uh, print editions here. Make sure you pick one up on the table. Or just Google Sarasota Phoenix and sign up for the online edition. Uh, John just came out with this incredible expose about how the Argus Foundation, a, uh, a leading pro-development group in this community led by Christine Robinson, Anybody who knows the players, you know who that is, um, are freaked out you know, and about single member districts. And uh, uh, you know, they, they fear that that's going to uh, lead to a, a, a fundamental change in county politics. And they're right. So try to get behind them. How many districts would there be? There are five now, there would remain five. And right now, a, county, a commissioner has to live in their district, uh, but they run countywide throughout the whole county. This would require them to live there and get elected there. Dan, do you know how much the average winning candidate spent to get elected to the county commission in the last election cycle? Um, Lourdes, do you know uh, I know how that much mayo spent? I know primary in 2013, <coughs> um, he spent $125,000 of his money, and then he had a $75,000 pack. So it was about $2,000 a month for that particular race. I'm not sure how much Paul Gary Julio spent, but I don't think it's as much. Yeah. I think most of it was in, in my district. Yeah, they were afraid of Lawrence. So they, they spent like crazy. They spent many of the mailers on me, all of me in my, all of me with my Halloween costume. But it was about 200. They said to to win in Sarasota County Commission race, you should have about 125,000. Yeah. But I, I you know, I pretty did pretty well for, and I, I raised about 45,000. I think I did pretty well that year, considering all the negative mailers that went my way. Yeah. So. Donate to campaigns too, you know, $20, $50, $100, $200, uh, whatever you can afford. You have your website up? Yes, I have the cards. Okay. Or, or just Google Lourdes Ramirez for County Commission and, um, uh, you know, there's a button you can push to help. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and it doesn't always have to be that way. In Manatee County, there was a developer that got elected to the County Commission named Stan Stevens and uh, had some terrible votes, you know, obviously for the development interest. And, and he was beat uh, resoundingly, I think it was like two to one, uh, by somebody that was outspent six to one by him and his developer contributors. So uh, it's just a matter of getting the word out. But a candidate has to have enough money to get their word out at least one or two times. And so people will know, oh yeah, that's the one I want. But I've been telling, I, I've been asked to give a lot of speeches lately uh, this year, I think because of this rising public concern about these issues. And I always suggest, I'll make it easy on you. The one that sends the candidate that sends you the most flyers, vote against that one. Because <laughs> the money is tainted, typically. Well, thank you so thank much you. for your gracious I appreciate it. There's a lot of institutional knowledge there, and I hope everyone here has learned something from what Dan has had to say. Um, I, if you have not signed the petition for the, the single candidate, single district. Single member district. Um, single, single member. Single, member. what is it? Single, single member, member district. Single member districts, there we go. Um, I will happily collect them 
and mail them for you. So if you'd like to get those to me this evening, that will make it easy for you. Just and if you want to take any blank team. ones, I'm sorry, if you want to take any blank ones for friends, um, mm -hmm. you know, if it's put in the mail tomorrow, they'll get it by Friday. Yep. Um, you know, you can take some extras. I, I don't have a good number. I heard earlier they could be within 1,000 to 2,000 short of where they need to be. So if you uh, have friends, if you belong to an online group that you can scan and post this and make it available, do it. Um, so please take a blank one um, with you if you have the ability to do that. When does it need to be in by? Uh, the 16th. And if it doesn't get in by Friday, or maybe Monday, Tuesday, you know, we're saying Friday, um, then at least they'll be able to get enough to, to affect the 2020 elections. And they'll continue. They'll have to start up. Yeah. yeah, if they don't make it, they, they're not giving up. It just won't impact 2018. It will be 2020 before we'll have our opportunity. So it's obviously really critical. And they don't have to start again. No. Right, right. They don't have to, she just said they don't have to begin again. They just can continue with what they have collected. Um, ben, I didn't ask if you wanted to do an update on the Bath and Racket. Is there anything you wanted to say to this group this evening? Uh, I can wait until next meeting. Okay. I'd be glad to do a thing. Great. Um, we just have a, a neighborhood member who is very knowledgeable, so if you can grab him if you have questions. <laughs> um, our candidates, um, Lourdes Ramirez and Wesley Biggs, will be here for a bit, so if you have questions or have not signed Lourdes' uh, petition, um, you'll have an opportunity to do that. And I thank all of you for coming out. We look forward to seeing you on April 9th. So uh, thank you, and meeting adjourned.